what is going on here? We got ourselves a 1960 Eagle in the driveway. And this is a multi plus 10,000, 48 volts. What is going on? If you wanna figure it out, you better keep watching. All right, we got the man, the myth, the legend, ah. JD of Soda Solar here, working on his own rig today. It's exciting stuff. Yeah, so. Finally. What exactly are you doing here? So we're doing something uh, a little bit different. It's actually not much different than what we had in the bus, uh, but we're taking, this is a European uh, model inverter, so it does not natively output 200 and, or 120 volt. AC, uh, like is standard in the US, it puts out 200, and, it's actually 230 volts, uh, is what it says. It's selectable between 220 and 240 uh, on that. Um, the inverter that I had in the bus uh, that we're taking out, let's, take, let's take a look right at that. Over here, yeah. So I went with this guy oh, a couple of years ago, uh, mainly because of costs. It was a lot cheaper and uh come and find out it's uh it's a lot cheaper um but we're uh, we're taking this thing out uh only had a couple of hiccups with it uh over the years apart from that it, it it did work good the hiccups were very very inconvenient uh timing and actually trying to fix it oh so uh the main problem so the seasonal campsite that we're at uh it only has 30 amp shore power uh, which the good and the bad of that is that it, uh, it actually gets really hot running 30 amps. And this unit does not have, uh, power sharing. What's it called? Uh, uh, load? Hybrid assist. Hybrid assist. There we go. Couldn't even think of it. Hybrid assist. Where you can set how much you want to take from the grid, uh, and then use the inverter for the rest of that. This thing is, uh, if you're, if you're seeing AC in, it's going to click over to pass that through and then it'll also charge the batteries off of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can't select that at all. So, uh, the last two months now we've been playing this goofy game of trying to make sure we're not pulling too much from shore power, uh, either that or actually shutting off shore power for a while. If we had to run higher loads, you know, the toaster oven and microwave at the same time, that type of thing. Crazy things like that. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. So now we've got that big guy over there that does do hybrid assist. So what JD tells me, at least the way I understand that, so we typically, I come from the mostly Victron school of thought, or just mm -hmm. to a certain extent work with these components. But JD's making, uh, basically I, the way I understand it is kind of made his own auto transformer. Yeah. And we're going to be doing that again here, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So maybe, pretty basic. Maybe when we get to actually getting this in there, you can give us a guide on how that actually works. Yes. And how that's going to work. Because it makes sense. Once you see it all connected, it's like, okay, that does that, that does mm -hmm. this. It's, it's a little bit of a complicated system, but making it work. And for the cost, too. I mean, what, the equivalent of, you'd have to get to the Quattro 5000 yeah. for this. And that would have been, what, probably an extra thousand more than this. Easily and more space. I don't think you would have had the room for it. Yeah, that's true. I do have tight quarters where this is going. Yep. Yeah, so on the there's just an in and an out on this. There's no neutral. Or no, there's a neutral and a line. Mm -hmm. There's no there's there's no traditional neutral. There's no midpoint on this at all. It's just two twenty mm -hmm. straight. But JD says he can make it work and I believe him because he's been doing it for so long. Yeah. So uh he's the brains behind this and we're gonna Oh, oh, that means it's time to get back to work, I think. All right, we'll catch up with you. Thought I'd brag on his battery bank here a little bit. Look at this. Very neatly done. Looks real good. These are all the uh, 280 amp hour cells. I think he's got, uh, how many in parallel? Three, yeah, three times 16. That's what it looks like to me. So... Whatever, three times 28 is his battery bank capacity at 48 volts. So they can go quite a long time. Using the Dally BMS, and I think we're gonna try and integrate that into the Servo GX, all that kind of fun stuff. All right, JD's pretty excited. All right, I'm thrilled right now. I, I just finished buttoning up the inside here. After taking way too long and redoing way too many things, please pardon the disaster still. 
here it is. Oh, With the lights and the, everything. Nice, <laughs> nice. Oh. Fire extinguisher, just in case. I like it. That was, uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, just in case. Uh, I'm as wide as, I'm on as wide as a mode as we can get. Let's take a look here. This beautiful yeah. bean footage. It's got the 240 panel. RS-450-100, lots of uh, cable raceway, solar breakers, the uh, Multi-Plus 10,000, and the, uh, off to the bottom left of the Multi-Plus 10,000, the uh, waterbed heater. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Looking good. That was way too much work and way too much redo. Oh, we, we still haven't told everybody what happened, did we? No, we didn't. Uh -huh. How many oh. days later is this since oh. the last one? I think it's been, uh, yesterday we didn't film at all. Yeah. Yesterday was a day of making stuff fit. So my original plan with the board uh, was, it's about 24 inches, actually 23 and three quarter from mm -hmm. the door edge to the back there. And uh, I was like, you know what would be great is if I just cut the board uh, three inches short from that. So that way I could put this cable raceway just right up here against the, the plywood that's back behind it. And then we'll easily have enough space to slide the board in and, and get it fit uh, just, just dandy. And I have a big hole cut right here for a bunch of cables to go in there to, well, it's on the back side here. You kind of see it's still a work in progress, but the control center type thing. You like that view more than the flow view? Uh, no, I haven't messed with it yet. Oh, okay. I, I do like the flow view better, but. Okay. Um, here we go. Jeez, I just broke something. <laughs> Is it gonna? Why doesn't just, it go? Just drill bit. Does the touch screen not work right now? Oh, so sometimes, sometimes when the touch doesn't work, you gotta reboot the uh, servo. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I, I was just doing a bunch of. I unplugged some stuff and then plugged oh, it okay. back in. Yeah, that'll do it. Cables, so <clears throat> probably needs a power cycle. Mm hmm So, anyways, long story short, back to the board. Uh huh. Uh, I measured it and I thought I subtracted the three inches for the raceway off of my measurements. So mm. we planned it and built it in the shop, assuming there would be a three inch raceway that would be going not on the board, but next to the board. And after a long and very uh, strenuous time getting this in here, as we're fitting it in, I realized that it's not, it's not the size that I anticipated that it would be, but it did fit perfect in here. So I just had to redo some stuff, cut a notch out here, reroute some yeah. wires, actually a lot of them. And all of the work that we tried saving by assembling stuff in there, I pretty much had to redo with the exception mm. of actually mounting the, um, the RS-450 and the Multi-Plus 10,000. Those stayed on huh. the board. I think everything else I took off and <laughs> oh, no. rewired. Uh, I well, found my face does fit right here between that board and the, uh, the Multi-Plus <laughs> just barely. Good to know, good to know. No, it looks great. <laughs> Looks great. Oh, that'll be nice. And it worked all night last night. So. Yeah, good to have. So yeah, he's he's got the mini split here running just to show you how little power they use. Yeah. It's only using two. Well, there's solar also. Yeah. I don't. Well, we can't touch it right now. We got to reboot that. But anyway, mini splits don't use much power at all. So mm -hmm. maybe give us a big recap on what's your like. How much you got solar battery bank? Yeah. Um. Exa just a, also a recap on how you're making this 230 volt, 50 hertz European model MultiPlus work in this continent. All right. Uh, so the overarching view, we have uh, 3,350 watts of panels on the roof, 10 335 watt panels. Uh, we have two separate strings of those uh, coming down through the roof uh, to our solar breaker box right there. Uh, the battery bank is in the luggage bay that's directly below here. Uh, I'm still cleaning some wiring stuff up down there. I'll show you in a bit. Uh, but I have the, or I built my own battery out of the 280 amp hour uh, cells, the lithium iron phosphate cells. That was, was it two years ago or three years ago? I think it was about three years ago now we did that. Yeah, three years ago. Um, and I did, since it's a 48 volt system, you have to do it in chunks of 16 batteries to get your 48 volts. Uh, I did three basically three of that, so 38 uh, of the cells, which ends up being, uh, I think it's just a little over 40 uh, kilowatt hours uh, of power. So it's a big battery bank. 
Uh, and the couple of times that I have needed it, it has really been there. And we've we've depleted it almost down to nothing. Um, still had full capacity in it. Uh, just in times when the generator wasn't working and some stuff like that. So that's been really nice. That's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of it. The system I did have in here was a uh, it's MPP Solar. Uh, it's actually made by was it Voltronic, I think is the whatever the mothership brand. There's a lot of other labels that they go under. Uh, that was an 8,000 watt all-in-one inverter, charge controller, all that fun stuff. Uh, it worked good for us. I did have a couple of hiccups with it. Did that for a couple of years, uh, saved up, and now we went big with the, the Multi Plus 10,000 48 volt mm -hmm. uh, unit. It's, uh, so it's European, it's a 230 volt output. The same with our old inverter, it was actually a European one as well. The way I made that work is simply with uh, transformers, step down transformers. Are those down in the bay, down below? Yeah, those are, the, right. they used to they be was... on the floor right in here. Uh, they're in the bay, uh, directly underneath me, right next to the batteries. Uh, so the way that works, when we're plugged into shore power, if it's a 50 amp plug that already has you know, 220, 240 um, voltage on it, so then that just passes through to the inverter. If we are on 110 volt for some reason, uh, that goes into a step up transformer, then that bumps it up to 220, uh, and then that goes into the inverter to be able to charge. Uh, you have to be careful with that, limit your uh, charging amps on that because if you're only running 100 or uh, 110 volt, you probably aren't on that big of a circuit. Uh, so that's how we charge going in. And then the output of this is uh, 230. It's actually selectable between 220 and 240. Uh, and it's also 50 hertz, but you can select in the programming to have 50 hertz or 60 hertz, which is really nice because messing with voltage, you know, going from 220 down to 110, uh, is just fine and all, but if your hertz are 50 hertz, it's gonna stay 50 hertz and that's gonna end up burning up stuff. A lot of sensitive mm -hmm. electronics is not meant to run on 50 hertz. So uh, you select 60 hertz to make that work. And then, uh, and the way I have this wired in, so right here is my 240 volt panel and the output goes directly to this panel. And then from here, uh, you can see on this one here, it goes down to my 120 volt system. So that goes down to a step down transformer that's in the bay. Uh, my mini split, which is a 220 mini split, a uh, water heater, which actually that's a spare now. I don't have an electric water heater anymore. Uh, this goes to my 12 volt, 24 volt converter. Uh, that's actually a, a Chinese thing. It's a 220 volt AC input, and then it goes to 12 volt down there. And then I have some 240 volt outlets uh, around the bus. We have an induction cooktop that's uh, 220 or 240, mm -hmm. so that runs off of that. Is that everything? I think so. Uh, well, before we go look and uh, see what what's down below there mm -hmm. question i think a lot of people are going to have is if if somebody on the internet wants us to do something like this for them would we <laughs> jump on that just yet <laughs> uh i would want to run this a little bit more there's there's a few different tests the things that i'm really uh hopeful for on this but i'd like to run it a little bit more but i don't see why not the other system that i had uh worked great except for those two hiccups which were manufacturer problems mm -hmm. So uh, all in all, I, I don't see why not. I would not install it in a super narrow closet like this because it's insanely difficult. Um, but apart from that, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see how this thing performs, like real world application. Nice. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go downstairs and take a look at your mega battery bank. All right. Still looks ugly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm rolling. All right, so this is the outside bay. I did clean it up some, like a temporary cleanup. Wires were going everywhere, and now they're bundled and zip tied. Yeah, it looks way better for once we teased it at one point. Wow. Yeah, so these are the, the batteries themselves that have been in about three years. I had to go with an upper deck to get them all to fit. Uh, this is my water bay, so it's insulated with, uh, I think it's two inches of that pink foam board stuff in the walls and floor, mm -hmm. and then the door. No, it's an inch and a half thick, looking at it. Um, so the batteries, it's, uh, uh, what would that be? 3P16S. Uh, you can see the aluminum bus bars on here. I do need to cover them, actually. Um, so that's- Yeah, I can see that being a good idea. Of something to do, just in case somebody, you know, throws a fork or a spoon. Or a wrench. Or a wrench or something. <laughs> that could get dangerous. 
Uh, the BMS 400 amp dally, uh, that's been working really good. Only had one setting hiccup uh, right away when I got it. And the uh, balancer right here, I actually want to tie this in now to the relay. Uh, okay. Some of the Victron stuff, so that way it's only really balancing when it's getting up towards the top state of charge. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious to play with the, um, the charging curve, the amps. Uh, hooking this up to that as well. Yeah, Sean, you've talked about it a few times. And well, yeah, yeah, I have. We have played around with it. I want to play with it some on this system and just see see how it works. Uh, and then back here, you can kind of see, if you come over here, you can see the two transformers, the, the black boxes on the right-hand side there. Uh, the first one closest uh, to the door, that's the one used for stepping up voltage. If we're plugged into 110 volt shore power, that steps it up to 220 before going into the inverter to charge. The next one, uh, the one on the back side is basically the house transformer, so that takes the 220 from the inverter and steps it down to 110. Uh, and then I even have an extra transformer from the previous setup that I think I'm gonna end up using for a buddy plug uh, eventually. Actually have it uh, That'd wired be nice. into a true like 50 amp split phase uh -huh. uh, plug. But that's for a different day. Yeah, it looks great. I think uh, I guess it'll work out good for you guys. Oh, curious to see how it shakes down over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Travel with it. And... I'm real interested to see how the uh, power assist and AC input current limit works. Yeah, that was Cause... a big thing for where we're at right now, the seasonal campsite that we're at. We only have a 20 amp uh, connection. So it gets mm -hmm. tough when you want to run the air mm -hmm. conditioner and a microwave. All right, we got anything else? I don't think so. We're we'll starting this up and heading back that way. <laughs> and then coming back here in the morning for working. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it. We got a couple other projects uh, we got to take care of, but yeah. yeah, this is JD and his family. They live in this 1960 Eagle bus, keeping the paint nice and sharp. I think that's a fresh paint job on there. Yeah, we just did that down in Arizona this spring. All right, if you want to follow what JD and his family are doing, check out the Renegade Life on Instagram. Yep. Post on there. Not so much YouTube. We have some old content from a few years ago, but mm -hmm. YouTube videos takes a lot of time to edit. <laughs> it does take <laughs> a lot of time. Let me tell you. Uh. Rather be hanging out with the family, mm -hmm. cooking hot dogs. All right. Delicious yumminess. Well, as always, yeah. if you got anything like this, uh, we don't just do it for people. We do it for ourselves. And uh, we'll so gladly help you attack this on your bus. Yep. Whenever you want. Or whatever else you got. Within reason. Yeah, within reason. Good good point. All right. See ya. Bye. Or, yeah, whatever. Right. Bye. We're saying Peace bye out. to everybody. Goodbye.